friends, Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. Today we're test driving the Scion FRS. Now we have test driven this car before here on Test Driven TV, but that one was a six speed manual and this time we've got the six speed automatic which really makes it quite a different car and in my opinion warranted a whole new test drive. So to start with, styling for the 2016 Scion FRS is identical to the 2015. No big changes here. It comes with rather sedate looking 17 inch alloy wheels. And on those wheels are also rather sedate 215 45R17 tires from Michelin. The front fascia was trend setting when the FRS was new, but the sharp and angular look has now been spread to almost all the Toyota models. Which leads me to the question, why not just call this what it is? A Toyota. At the rear of our tester here, you can see something different though. We have optioned the TRD exhaust system, which has downright huge delta shaped exhaust tips. It's pricey at 1100 bucks, but really amps up the sound. The interior of the FRS did get a few new things for 2016. What you see that's new here is mainly the bright silver trim on the doors and the steering wheel. And with the automatic, it has paddle shifters on the wheel too. Ahead of the steering wheel is still a nicely laid out and simple instrument cluster which is easy to read. The center stack is as simple as they come too. No climate control or endless gadgets here. And that for some reason pleases me on this particular car. There's also a new standard Pioneer audio system for 2016 that has a very good sound quality for a base unit. Its touchscreen is easy to use, it offers voice controls and a variety of connectivity options. You can add additional things at the dealer like satellite radio and navigation, but the new backup camera is now standard. I think it's a nice unit and thus the technology gets scored at 5 out of 5 stars. The seats in this car are positively fantastic. Unlike the Recaros and the Mustang I recently tested, I can sit in these comfortably all day long with no pain as a result. And the cloth fabric grips you well as well as breathes in the heat. I do wish leather was an available option though. On the console by the way, the automatic shifter looks remarkably similar to a manual one and at its base are the drive mode controls which include a track oriented sport mode which significantly disables the traction and stability control nannies. There are a couple costs here to this being a compact sports car. Storage is at a minimum with no center console compartment and the back seat, well it's really there more to make your insurance rates lower than really add passenger capacity. The trunk though is nicely sized for a car like this. You can fold the rear seat forward a bit but not flat unless you really push the front seats up. And I'm particularly happy to say that there's a spare tire under that floor. This is because I picked up a bolt on the freeway on my first day with the FRS. If this car had a can of fix a flat and an air pump, I would have been stranded with my only option being call a tow truck. So kudos to Cyan for this. This cherry on top gives the FRS 5 out of 5 stars for its interior. Under the hood is the shared engine with Subaru, a 2 liter flat 4 boxer engine. This one has Toyota's D4S fuel injection system though, with both port and direct injectors. This nets out a nice 200 naturally aspirated horsepower. I'm not really a big fan of automatic transmissions in sports cars, but here, this goes a long way to toning down this engine, which in the past I've always said is quite noisy. And it still is noisy, but because, as you can hear, because this transmission sort of shifts at a little bit lower than you might, even in sport mode, the rackets cut back quite a bit. Now one more thing I want to point out is this has the optional TRD exhaust system which you can probably hear pretty well and so what that does 
is it gives me some sound back there that's pretty loud. And that sound offsets the noise and the thrashiness this engine offers up. And that, that's a very good thing. Now, the only commentary I'm really going to offer up here, aside the fact that this noisy engine is still noisy, is the fact that it really could use a turbocharger. And not only because it would give it extra power and some well-needed torque in the mid-range, so you wouldn't have to rev it out and hear it, but a turbocharger would also go a great long way to smoothing it out, making it a little bit less thrashy, uh, and taking some of the edge off of it. The EPA City fuel economy is 25 MPG and the highway being 34. In my week with the FRS, I achieved 31 MPG combined, which is, well, more than the EPA promised 28 combined. And with that, I give the powertrain 4 out of 5 stars. The chassis of the FRS follows the time-honored sports car formula. That's rear-wheel drive, a fully independent suspension, good brakes, and a light overall curb weight. And on our tester, they added in the optional TRD rear sway bar for some extra flavor. Now when it comes to handling, this is a car that I've had a chance to drive on the racetrack where it really and truly comes alive. Now that's not to say that you can't have fun out on a public road, because it's very much fun. And what makes it so is the fact that it feels light, it feels flingable, and it's got steering that's just very well balanced, it's very communicative, and you combine that with a suspension that's just stiff enough right up to the edge of being tolerable. You can tell that they didn't really compromise here and make a suspension soft enough to try to appeal to more people. This is going to be something that sports car lovers are really going to appreciate. And so the sum total here is the fact that you've got a car that's just got a pure sports car drive to it. It's not watered down to be any kind of a luxury car. It's got excellent balance because it doesn't have a big heavy engine in front. And the tires, even though on a racetrack they show their hand when it comes to lack of grip, out on a public road they're just right because here they sign off at a level which is almost commensurate with well, where you shouldn't go any further than on a public road. Putting a smile on my face up here on the Apache Trail is always advantageous when it comes to scoring the chassis, and when you add in the fact that its suspension remained well composed even on the rougher sections, it earned an easy 5 of 5 stars in this area. Overall quality here too is an area where the FRS makes this all look so easy. Aside from a rattle or two inside over the rougher pavement, the build of this car is solid. The finishes and fit of all of its parts were virtually flawless, thus it earns 5 of 5 stars for quality feel. In safety, the Scion FRS continues to impress as the IIHS awarded it their coveted top safety pick. It achieved good results in most tests and an acceptable on their small overlap test. Crash prevention technologies aren't yet available here, so it's not eligible for Top Safety Pick Plus. So let's have a look at the specs. As you can see right there, the price on this is just under $30,000. That is, even with the automatic transmission and that expensive exhaust system. Even still, I think that represents a pretty good value because how many other sports cars like this are there for the price? I mean, you can get into a Hyundai uh, Genesis Coupe, that's bigger, more expensive. You can get into a Mustang, bigger, more expensive. You can also do a 370Z, bigger, more expensive. Now, there's also the MX-5 out there, but that car is, well, it's really sort of a different animal altogether. So really, other than the Subaru BRZ, which this is identical to, very few other competitors out there for this price. So I think it represents a good value is my point. So with that, we're at five stars for value. When you put it in with everything else we've already talked about, well, we're at five stars for the week, baby. I'm Sam Haymar for Test Driven TV. I hope you enjoyed the ride. Well folks, if you like the test drive you just saw, click on the link right there. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We test drive one, sometimes two cars 
every single week. And we have a new video almost every single day. So there's always something new. So stay tuned.